This tutorial will review the process for replacing a digitizer on a Samsung mobile device, specifically the Samsung Galaxy S6. This process is valid for both the Galaxy Note and S series devices. We will also change the color of our device during the process. The first step, which involves removing the back panel, is only applicable to recent devices. The Galaxy S series versions 5 and older, for instance, have removable back panels for performing a battery pull. In order to get started, you'll need the following hardware. Your new digitizer, and a back panel if applicable, a thin flat leveraging device like a guitar pick, a heat gun or hair dryer, a miniature screwdriver like those in a glasses repair kit may be applicable for your device as seen with the Galaxy Note 2 demo. I have here the Galaxy Note 2, Galaxy S7, and Galaxy S6 with a digitizer and back panel. This is the digitizer. It's a module which consists of both the capacitive touch panel and the screen module combined. For more information on alternative touch panel types, take a look at our YouTube channel. We have several episodes discussing these modules for tablets and computers as well. The first step is to remove the back panel. On older devices like these, we have the ability to remove the back panel easily like so. After you remove this, you'll see several screws which need to be removed. Remove the battery and any micro SD or SIM cards you might have present. After removing those, unscrew the frame. We already have our Galaxy S6 detached, so rather than going through this process, we'll just skip over to here where we'll remove the back panel using a heat gun or hair dryer. For newer models, you'll need to use a heat gun or hair dryer like this one. Be sure that your device is turned off and remove the SIM card from the side of your frame. Your device probably came with a key that can be used to press the ejection pin, but you can also use a needle or a thin paper clip if it fits. This is what your key will look like. And it typically goes in through a hole in the top or side, like this. Press on it to eject. Then, with the blow dryer on high heat, apply heat to the edges of the device. This will loosen the adhesive. After loosening the adhesive, use your leveraging device to get underneath the edge of the panel and lightly pry it from the frame. I strongly advise using several picks at different positions to distribute the pressure evenly. I've already removed this panel, so it's going to look a little bit easier than it actually is. So be patient, it may take several rounds of heat and leverage to safely do this. You don't want to overheat the device, but you also don't want to crack the back panel, so be patient. After you've removed the back panel, depending upon the device, you might see either the back of the frame or several protective layers over the motherboard itself. Unscrew the layers, like we would do over here. And then if the frame is in the way, apply pressure to the back of the battery cavity, like this. This will dislodge the motherboard from the frame. Once the frame is out of the way, disconnect the various connectors, like the display cables and signal cables.
I'll give you a closer look. This port right here is a digitizer ribbon cable port. At this stage, older models like this Note 2 will be able to be disconnected without the use of heat gun. But for newer models, you'll repeat the heat gun and leveraging process for the front to separate the digitizer from the frame. As I've said earlier, we've already detached the Galaxy S6, so let's flip that over and show you what it looks like. This is the back where the motherboard is, and this is the front with the digitizer detached. Now it is possible, but unlikely, that you are here to find out how to replace the glass when the screen and touch behavior are working without error. You'll see here and the glass panels, which cost around $15, can be purchased separately from the digitizer, which usually costs north of $100. These two can be separated using a thin diamond hard cutting wire, like floss, shimmying from the corner across the panel to disconnect the two. Now that you've detached your digitizer, here's our digitizer, and here's our motherboard and battery. You'll want to make sure that you've detached the battery and all the motherboard pieces after you've detached all of the connectors. That'll be one way to disconnect it from the frame and the digitizer. We're going to keep this connected because now that we have our digitizer detached and we're going to attach a new one, we're going to test it out. Don't worry about detaching your camera. Most of these are display ports like this one. These two right here on the bottom end, those two are your signal cables. After you've inspected closely that everything's been plugged in, Attach your digitizer to the corresponding input. That'll go right there. Now you'll want to power this on. And we can see that the battery is starting to charge. Once we've noted that the panel is working properly, we'll mount it permanently. You'll want to re-detach your digitizer and then make sure that you separate the motherboard from the frame once again.
you'll want to fit that cable back through this cavity. Which you should be able to do when your motherboard is disconnected. So we'll disconnect it once again. And we'll slide that right in through the frame. Like so. Once it's on there, mount your motherboard again. Reattach the cables, including the digitizer. Signal cables in place, patches in, in place, batteries in place. Now we just need to mount it within the frame again. Okay, it's in there. I'd suggest using some spray adhesive here. Just be sure it does not get on the buttons or components. Depending upon the digitizer that you've purchased, some of them may already have adhesive on them. All you'll need to do is remove the protective film. If you do use a spray adhesive, one way to get the remnants off is by using something like Goof Off or Gooby Gone. This adhesive should work on its own, but if it doesn't, you can try taking out the heat gun or blow dryer again, just to make sure. Once again, to help apply heat, to get that adhesive nice and sticky. Always a good idea to make sure that your device is off while this is happening. We'll turn it on to test. Wait for it to power on.